welcome to our channel or welcome back. Today we are going to do a video on the process of new construction. We're realtors on the Cuomo team and we have a lot of content on this channel and we're going to do a lot more informative videos just like this. So we're going to talk about the seven steps to buying a new construction house. So step one is to really just figure out your priorities and what you're looking for in a home, um, kind of analyzing those needs and wants, what your family absolutely needs in a home or what would just be a really nice feature. Um, another thing is to really consider your location. Not only what area or city do you want to live in, but also do you want to be inside of an HOA? Would you prefer to be outside? There's all different types of HOA communities too. So really sitting down and figuring out what would be important to you in your home search is a really nice place to start. A lender helps you understand the kind of payment that you can afford and will also go over different loan types. That's a pretty valuable thing for new construction in general. There's FHA loans and conventional loans, which are what most people will be considering. Or VA. Or VA loan. But there's also something called a construction to perm loan, which is quite unique to new construction. And that's if you're going for specifically custom build. So not just a build with some design choices, but like from the ground up, you have pretty much full control over the building process. You can break down walls and really even offer your own floor plans to some of these builders. Those will use a construction to perm loan, which means that you'll be paying a mortgage from the beginning of getting it to contract to the end of it. Everything else uses an end loan where you will not be paying a mortgage payment until the end when you sign and you get your house. Something else that I really want to go over is just actually picking which lender you want to work with. This is a really important step in this process. Um, and we really always emphasize to decide early. Um, I always say near around the, the 60 day mark, you'd want to have it completely filled out who you definitely want to go with the lender. But by deciding early, you're able to smooth out different processes later on and it keeps everybody nice and well connected. A lot of different builders do offer incentives to go with their lenders and they'll offer, um, we've seen percentages or 5,000 or 10,000. And in some cases it's worth it. It helps you with your closing costs. But something to consider is to go and seek out different lenders and get different loan estimates. We can always help you go over it as well and, and to really see what those closing costs will be with a couple different lenders before you completely decide on one of them. Yeah, we usually have people send over the loan estimates that the lenders are giving them and we can give them an idea of what looks normal, what's comparative to something else, and then they usually pick a lender that really works for them. But as she mentioned, often the lender that the builder offers, the incentive they give you towards closing costs is worth it for many people mm -hmm. and they have comparative rates. Not always, but that does happen a lot. Anytime you're buying a home, whether that's a resale home or a new construction home, you're not paying a realtor anything at all. The seller is always who pays the realtor. When it comes to building, the company pays for the realtor and they don't offer an incentive if you don't have a realtor or something like that. It's just a part of the process. So there's, it's a no brainer to get a realtor when you're going to have uh, a purchase. You have all this expertise, questions that can be asked anytime and you're going to have an answer and uh, someone to just help you through the whole process and there's just no reason to, to let that go. I also wanted to kind of go in to just make sure that realtor is a good fit for you. There's so many different professionals out in the market who do an excellent job, but the reality is is that everybody has different personalities that kind of click with different clients. And so we always tell people just call and see and everybody has a different style, but if you find someone that you're a good click with, it just makes the process a whole lot smoother. Yeah, it's much more enjoyable and especially with new construction, this mm -hmm. is a long process. Yeah. You know, when we're doing when we're working with resale homes, they're looking for a couple um, months, but then the process of the actual purchase should be more more than a month really, whereas you're going to be working with a realtor for up to a year or more on your yeah. new construction, so you want to make sure it's a good fit. Some new constructions now are quoting um, 16 months up to build yeah. time. So. And there's also wait lists and things mm -hmm. like that. So another thing to mention about uh, using a realtor is that they represent you. So anytime you walk into a builder, the representatives there are almost always extremely nice people that you will work in conjunction with, but they're there to represent that builder. Mm -hmm. They're not looking out for your best interest. If that were to mean going somewhere else works out best right. for you. A realtor has essentially no skin in the game on who you are going to go with. So mm -hmm. the whole idea here is helping you find out what is absolutely best for you and then facilitating that purchase. You know, in an ideal situation, the realtor that you choose would have a, a good idea of the market. And that's another reason I think why it's so beneficial to be with somebody, especially out of state. I think we work with so many out of state clients that 
for instance, areas like Jupiter or Port St. Lucie, they're big and they have a lot of different feels to them. And so it's important to get to know a realtor that has that knowledge and is able to kind of take you to different parts of town and let you know what's close to this and, and all the different amenities that town has to offer. And sometimes the schools are a consideration. Yeah. Port St. Lucie is a unique spot. We have I made a lot of videos about Port St. Lucie where they do like a lottery system, mm -hmm. but there's just a lot of information about locations that a realtor should be able to provide to you. Correct, yeah. So step four would be to tour all of the options. A lot of times Matthew and I call it the big information day and you just go and really see what's out there. Um, what I wanted to mention is, is this looks different in different areas. So certain areas, maybe like Jupiter Farms or Loxahatchee, maybe this would more look like you and your realtor scouting out different land parcels and seeing which one would best fit your needs and then going and seeing what builders build in that area. Other areas like Port St. Lucie, it's more of a streamlined feel. So you might be going into model centers and seeing those homes or going actually out and seeing houses that are partway built. Um, and, and seeing the different models and options. Yeah, overall, this step, step four, is the most important one. You mm -hmm. had an idea, a preliminary idea of what you were looking for, and now your realtor is helping you see everything in front of you so that you can start you know, slashing things off your list, you know for a fact you don't want that, or highlighting the things that you might want to revisit or something. Yeah. This process takes time. People uh, want to make sure they're making the right decision, but it's just really important to start looking at your options, and you will quickly narrow down what you're looking for. And you know, we've had so many people change their minds too. It's interesting because sometimes people will come in with a very direct idea of what they want, but then once they see it in person, or I don't know, they get a second glimpse of it after comparing it to another option, they just seem to completely change their minds. And that's why we kind of emphasize to our clients that the reason to do such a big information day is so you don't have any regrets. And you know that, hey, I saw all of the options and this is the one I feel most confident in. So I think that's why it's so important. Yeah, we absolutely like to take them to as many options as possible, even ones that maybe you don't feel like mm -hmm. you really want that, because again, you can just cross out the list, you say, I know I saw that, it's not what I'm looking for, and something else we sometimes do is bring people to some resale homes in the same price. Yeah. Um, there is advantages and disadvantages of both. I think new construction is an amazing thing for mm -hmm. most people who are even looking in that realm. But just seeing a couple of resales that they could get for the same price almost always solidifies their decision. And it makes helps them know make your decision. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think it's really important to go see what's out on the market around the same price that you could build a new home. And like you said, there's pros and cons 100% to each to each one. So step five is narrowing your choice down. So ideally you've seen all the options and you've revisited the ones that you may be interested in and, and now you've decided, okay, I know exactly what I wanna get. And sometimes the next step right after that comes really quick or sometimes there's some, there's some time in between. But this would include things like if you were going somewhere with a lot of design choices, having a design day and really determining what the pricing would be. Often mm -hmm. they can sit down and price out every option that you're considering and tell you right then and there how much it's gonna cost. So the next step is narrowing down the builder you wanna go with, maybe the lot, maybe the area, and the design choices. Once you have that process done, the hard part is out of the way and you're ready to just buy your house and it's, it's smoother sailing from that point on. Because mm -hmm. you've decided and you, you should feel confident at this point in your decision. Um, and like he said too, there's varying degrees of design options. So some of the ones that we mentioned earlier, builders like Synergy or RGM or Groza, builders that build on scattered lots in Port St. Lucie and also in Jupiter and Loxahatchee, those types of builders will have a giant design day because it's such a fully custom home. So it's imperative to sit down and see what they're offering. Other builders such as Moronda, they still have options, but it's a little bit more limited. So you'll have say seven or eight different choices of granite to choose from or three or four different types of cabinetry that's included. And then yet still there's production builders in which you really won't have a design day. Yeah, what you decided was you want that builder and mm -hmm. they're gonna have a home exactly how it's done. And sometimes those are the easiest ones. We sell a lot just like that because you're still getting a new home with all the specs that you you really desired and uh, it's a it's smooth process and it's much quicker often. It's definitely much quicker just because production homes already have it set out versus fully custom homes it, it takes a bit to get all the options in there. So this step has everything to do with really deciding I know exactly what I'm gonna get. I've seen the options I know what I'm gonna look forward towards. So step six is actually securing the contract on the home or the lot depending on how you're choosing to do this. So I kind of mentioned this before, but once you really narrow down what you want, it could be as simple as there's an inventory home ready to go, or it could be that there's wait lists, or sometimes builders work off of releases. So you know you're interested, but every week they come out with some homes and different lots. You can browse and see, does this one fit for you? 
And other times, you know you're trying to buy one lot and have a builder come there, so the step really is to purchase the lot. Mm -hmm. It really depends, but you now know what you want and you're gonna do what it takes to secure the contract going forward. At this point, you'll often need a pre-approval to get into contract. I would say that most builders do require it. Sometimes they require it from their in-home lender just for you to get pre-qualified, not for you to use them, but at least for the in-house lender to qualify you. Or they'll also accept an outside lender letters sometimes. It just really depends on what the builder allows. But in addition to the pre-approval, you'll have to be putting down a deposit with this contract too. The deposit does go towards closing costs, so it'll just be taken off your final cash to close in general. But it really depends, again, on what builder you go with. Sometimes deposits can be super low, as low as three or $5,000. And then other times, especially when it's a more custom builder, they'll go up from there like 10 to 15%. This is something that's great about new construction, though, either way. Because typically, you're going to get into contract and then have months and then you pay your final down payment. So you have this time period to kind of get all your ducks in a row. I mentioned this earlier, but there is something called a construction to perm loan. So if this, at this point, that's what you were doing, that's for fully custom building, then you would start your contract and you are gonna assume a mortgage right away. So it's gonna be somewhat different than the end loans. But 99% of the time, people are getting an end loan, even with homes with lots of design choices. Finally, once you've signed a contract, your price is locked. I've heard a lot of builders talk about how other builders are raising the price on people while they're in contract. It's not that that never has ever happened, but that is not how a normal contract is supposed to function. And you can ensure that the builder that you go with doesn't do that. Yeah. And most of the ones, especially in Port St. Lucie and Jupiter and Loxahatchee, the places that we've sold at, it, it's not common at all. So we just kind of wanted to say that. Of course, like he said, absolutely it could happen. And that's why you read your contracts very carefully and have your realtor go over it. But for the most part, yeah, we haven't seen it And too we much. can help you know, okay, you're going with this builder. They're not going to, you know, send you a curveball and suddenly your home is going to be a different price. So for the most part, you got into contract, you have locked in the price. If your home increases in value, which we've been seeing a lot, yeah. by tens of thousands of dollars, by the time you sign, you're still paying that price that you locked in. So it's a great situation. A fully executed contract is when you, the buyer, has signed it and the seller has signed it. So the company you're buying it from or even some smaller builders, and they, we correspond, go back and forth, and you finally have everything in hand. Step seven is to finalize the purchase. At this point, you have waited and you watched your home be built. Sometimes it depends on how long the build time was quoted as. You can watch the lock getting cleared and the home coming from start to finish. Or other times it was a more inventory house purchase, so it's a pretty quick process. Either see. way, it's one of the yeah. most exciting parts of this whole thing, watching definitely. your home get built. I definitely agree. Um, and then near the end, you receive something called a certificate of occupancy, meaning that you can close. It's imperative that just a lot of open communication is happening with the lender to process all of this. We've seen so many files have a very difficult time towards the end of this. Right at the end, you, everyone's running around because the lender and everything else is not as set up. It takes days to do what they're doing Correct. at the end there. It takes business days, so mm -hmm. you, they have the days they need but there's a weekend and you would be surprised. So it's so important that as the, it's getting closer to the end, we're in contact with the builder and we're asking, when is that certificate of occupancy coming? They never give an exact date. Yes. It yeah. are, they're all working off estimates because a simple change in the inventory of the products they have can kind of slow the build time down. And usually it's like within 10 days that they want to close that from that point. So absolutely imperative that the lender is informed and everyone is in the back end making sure it's getting done while this is about to close. And then a lot of times as well, you'll have your walkthroughs. So it depends on what the builder's process is, but I've seen it done that you'll have a walkthrough about a week before you close. You make something called a punch list. So you walk around with the blue tape and you see if anything's kind of out of order. For the most part, I would say that the homes come in pretty good condition. You'll see scuffs on the wall. Um, maybe a cabinet won't open correctly. They'll test all the appliances, but if you see something that's not up to standards, you'll write it down, he'll write it down, we'll put it on the punch list, and then you'll put the blue tape on it, and then in about another week, you'll typically have your final walkthrough, in which you walk through, you ensure that everything on your list has been taken care of. If it hasn't, typically you'll sign something saying that they'll come back in about a week or two to finish it up. Um, and of course, there's different warranties and things. They almost always come with a form of uh, warranty. Mm -hmm. um, and the final walkthrough is also where they explain a lot about the house. So mm -hmm. when you're buying a house, there's a lot of moving parts to it. Um, sometimes it's just the, the panels that go on the windows if it's not in packed glass. 
how to use the appliances. So it's, it's a very, it's an information day for the home that you're getting at that point too. So it's ensuring that the quality is up to standard and also that you understand how to use your home. And finally, you will sign for your home. So this is typically done at a local title company that's picked out in advance or other times if you're from out of state or you're not in the area, you can request a mobile closer. But by that point, you secure the title, you, they get the keys to you, and it's a very exciting time. Your purchase is finalized. Absolutely. And at that point, you finally pay the down payment that you is associated with your loan mm -hmm. and minus the deposit that you paid. So when you pay a deposit, it, this is all going to go towards that down payment. It's not just going to the builder. And then you're going to assume the mortgage. You're going to understand exactly how much on your mortgage is going to uh, your taxes, your insurance, and your principal and your interest. And it is a very exciting time, everyone is just ready to kind of get the house after they've been seeing it built this entire time. And you will sign a million pieces of paper. Yes, get ready to sign a lot of paper. Bring papers. two forms of identification. It totally depends on the title company, what they require, but two forms would be good and they make you sign in a blue pen. Yeah, oftentimes this job is just about being as thorough as possible. So when it comes to that day, you absolutely want to make sure everything is taken care of so that everything runs smoothly and by the end of the day, you have your house. Well, thank you so much for watching our video. We really appreciate it. Once again, we're on the Cuomo team at Keller Williams in South Florida. My name is Tassiana and this is Matthew. We'd love to help you with your home purchase if you have any questions at all. All of our information will be at the end of the video and also in the description box below. We work a ton in Port St. Lucie, a ton in Jupiter and Palm Beach Gardens, all throughout West Palm. So if you have any questions on different areas, please let us know. We work on a team that's been doing this for over 22 years. We'd be happy to help you guys. So once again, thank you so much for watching and we hope that you have a great day.